Servus, willkommen in Bayern. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Bavaria, to Königsee, the oldest artificially iced track in the world. It's the final day of the third race weekend of the BMW IBSF World Cup, and that means it is four-man day, the Blue Ribbon event. Martin Haven, and alongside me, John Morgan, ready to catch the action. Well, the track built late 60s, the first artificially cooled track they ever built, and really had a luge personality, and then they started figuring out two mans and four mans should come down the track. Not long, sub 50 second times, the track record, as usual, the Latvians and Team Melbardis, they own it, but that could fall today because the Germans say that they're going to match it. First curve in down, and this take on the first curve, very important. Here, you got to exit perfect, have to have a good start speed, and now you go to this four quarter combination they call the Schlalen Group, which is Snake Pit, four S's, and then an exit into a long straightaway, like a chicane. The Americans call it a bend around. You hit three times like that. You just saw two of them. And now this big turbodrome, which is a Chrysal. And you exit, boy, into a very challenging spot. The labyrinths for these four mans in this little curve right there could have caused a lot of problems for the back end of the four mans. And you still have Echo Von, a lot of four Gs, speed. Now notice you're going uphill here. A lot of races could be one lost in this last section of the track. Through and down. It's very easy to get down. Well, let me st let me not let me repeat that. It's not easy to get down. <laughs> and it's certainly not easy to get down fast. It's the oldest track in the uh, business, just about, barring San Moritz, but it is still one of the toughest. Francesco Friedrich, undefeated so far this year in two-man or four-man, ahead of world champion Max Arndt, and they are expected to star here for Germany on a track that has never been faster since it was opened in 1968. Records have tumbled this weekend, most of them set in the World Championships in 2011, when the track was previously its record best, and there is the man, and there is the other man, Torsten Margis, the brakeman, and Francesco Friedrich, you just saw, who have dominated in two-man. Our four-man world champion, Max Arndt, he'll be looking to come back here and try and take his first gold medal of the season. Alexei Stulnev of Russia is the first man off the hill. And the Russians have struggled a little for pace this season. And Oscars Melbardis won the World Cup in two-man and four-man last year. But John, the Latvians even, are struggling to find the pace to deal with Friedrich. He's come out this year so fast and so hard. Well, Melbardis has been able to touch him in the two-man, just uh, finishing second. There's Steve Holcomb. Good finish yesterday, seventh place, his best of the season. But the Latvians have new sleds. Eighth in the first run, uh, first uh, race, fifth in the second race. And they're still finding pace with those sleds and rhythm dialing themselves in. They'll get another couple of chances to do so before Christmas here today. Then there's a three-week hiatus before we start racing again in Lake Placid at the beginning of the North American swing. 24 sleds in our field, 20 fastest go through into the second heat. We get our last pre-Christmas race underway with Russia's 28-year-old Alexei Stulnev from Pavlovsk. Former two-man silver medalist in the junior worlds. And he's 12th and 7 in his first two races. The Russians had a very disappointing two-man competition yesterday. There's their coach in the back, Pierre Luders. They can get down with efficiency. The Russians are good at it. Start 495. That's boy, there's gonna be in the 70s start, so that's not very good. I think we're gonna have a quick track here. Sun's on the bottom part of it. There's the S's. Four man, tough to get it into a skid, but boy, when you get this four man into a skid on this track, watch out. Now watch this challenging exit here into the labyrinth and watch how the back end of these sleds are in the third part of this labyrinth. Watch this. Ah, that's pretty good. That's a really nice run from Stormhead. Two mans were a little bit more out of control going through there. Real high down at Echovant. Trying to carry the speed all the way uphill here to the line. First man down, 49-12. Track record is 48-65, so six tenths faster. And it might well be in the second heat that the track gets even quicker. However, if anything else 
we've seen this weekend, we have seen some stunning record pace. In men and women's skeleton, the track record was lowered not by a few hundreds, but by over six tenths of a second. Both disciplines, 62 hundreds. A little skid here on the exit of the fourth S into the bend around. Aerodynamic profile still alive is still not really sits down low on that sled. Eyes barely above the cowling. Aerodynamic position is good. Watch the back end here. I mean, to get a four man sled through there, it's a fine line. When they designed this in 68, the sleds were going a hell of a lot slower down there, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, about 10 seconds slower. Yeah. So next up is Great Britain's Lamin Dean with John Baines, Joel Fearon and Andy Matthews behind. And we want to say hello to Harrison back home and his sister Sophia. And John says, well done on your gymnastics test. And the boys will be home for Christmas in 24 hours. But before then, time to see what they can produce here at the start. This should be mid 80s. This is this is some, the British have got two very athletic teams in the competition today at four-man. Neither four-man pilot drove in the two-man yesterday. Yeah, the brake men were doing the driving right. in the two-man. They're in the other sled with John Jackson. Yeah, these guys got to get into the mid-80s, so unless they make a mishap. Oh boy, the guy in the right ran a long time in down quick. Look at this, 481. 481. Wow, I tell you, the, ooh, look at that hard hit, though. He lost everything. Almost, you saw him almost skid on the exit of one, so he did not have a good entry into the curve. It was a violent entry, and that violent takes away a lot of your speed. Mm -hmm. Little high in the S's, oh, a skid. long skid down the straightaway. Good speeds here. Hear the sled thunder through this concrete channel. Low, watch out, low. Good exit. Lost a lot of time. Oh. For the four man sled to get 1,375 pounds airborne like that. What a hit that was yep. in the chicane. Good speed on the bottom, but boy, Lamadine. That, with that start time, he beat the Russians by 1,400s. He lost them by three tenths at the bottom. Yep. Wow. Well, pretty much most of the things that can go wrong on this track went wrong from turn one, exit of the Yeah, turn one labyrinth. shouldn't be a problem, you know. Watch this hard hit. Watch the violence here. That's just not a fast line. The head snap. Yeah. you got to get around there smoother. Watch this thing's airborne here. Hard to get that 1,375 pounds airborne like and you that. You can pop hips and ribs down there yeah. very easily. Second of our Russian sleds now, 32 year old Alexander Kasyanov from Bratsk, which is where our Olympic champion Alexander Zubkov also hails from. Second in the four man World Cup standings at the end of last season. But he is yet to win a four man race. Probably get the 90s start. Neither of the Russian sleds get great starts. There's 90. Watch his ex or his entry. A lot better than Lamadeen. And of course he comes out of here straighter. And his speed 43-8. Tenth up on his teammate still there. Looking at a Russian one-two at the moment. That's a good exit yeah. onto the bend no away as well. There. Well, this is the guy who finished fourth in both disciplines, two and four at the Sochi One Olympic Games. This is the he inherited Russia one, but hasn't provided results in these first two years since Sochi. Kasinov right trying to shoot for the medal. Big speed at the bottom. Three Russian sleds all out of the top ten in the two man race yesterday. Wow. That's good speed. Yeah, this is what you expect. 49 flat. You know, they're well off the track. 3,500's off the track record, but it's still the first round. It's a frosty morning. Well, one more of some of these sleds, the Latvians, the Germans, they're going to get into the 70s. Yep. And I think we got a chance for that track record. To I think so, too. Go down. The S's. The four S's up here. The way these drivers have to find the line within inch, two inches 
a different type of a variance from one to the other. And the back end of those four mans do get airborne and light. I know, I've been through it. Yeah. Real. It's like it's like a senseless feeling. It's a great that. roller coaster ride. If you can take a, a tourist trip down here, it's a fantastic taxi ride. Won't be any taxi driving today though. Oscar's Kibermanis, the 32-year-old Latvian. Tied with Alexei Stolnev of Russia for the silver medal in the Junior Worlds three years ago. And then moved on into the World Cup action that season as well. This is now his fourth year as a Latvian driver. Very disappointing result yesterday with the second best start time. He's finishing back at 17th or something. Yeah, the Latvians do have new sleds. Takes a while to get a rhythm. Turn 45. And sometimes you find that a sled that really suits one driver really doesn't necessarily suit another driver's style. And so much of this is a head game. You've got to dial yourself in or somehow get the team to change the sled to fit you. Not a very good exit with that start time. It should have been more green outs and red numbers. Now he's going to be chasing down Kasanov's time. He's, you know, he's only 22 years old, a lot of promise. I believe that Latvians would expect him to start seeing more results out of him pretty quick this season. Speed's way back, three kilometers plus back. He'll be down behind Lamin D. He is behind Lamin There he is. You know, yesterday we saw about 10 sleds within 10 hundreds of each other. Here are the, four, the first four sleds down. There's quite a separation. Yeah. Usually in four man, it's even closer than the two man. Well, we've got 24 sleds, so there's still an awful lot that can rack in. And don't forget, we've still not got our fastest German sleds even on the ice. This is the exit of the fourth S. Looks a little high there. The back, the back mm. runner's airborne. Look at it. Yeah. And then that, look at the articulation, how it splits, and that drives them over into the wall, it drives them into a skid, that drives them into six tenths back at the bottom, too. Flops off the final corner of the S's, and he knows it. Not a good weekend for him. More Latvians, yeah, 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 still more Latvians, and this is Oscar Smelbardis, 27-year-old, two and four-man World Cup champion last year. Silver in the Olympics in 2014 in Sochi in the four-man bobsled. Does not have his sidekick with him, Dominic Strieskins, who only goes to a man. He's nursing a hamstring, or excuse me, a, a Achilles. Yeah. Then he'll use him for one of the disciplines. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got an Achilles injury, so they make him push the sled on his own rather than with the two other buddies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Watch this. This will be a good start. Should be low 80s, if not a 79. Look at the size of the driver. He's in pretty quick. Flat start. In and down. 478. 200s off the track, track record. record. Well, it's not bad when you replace the best brakeman in the world with somebody off the bench and the team post the start time. 200s from the start record. Yeah. Latvians, that little small nation. Again, a little late off there, same as his teammate was, Kiva Manis. But he's got a two-tenths lead over Alexander Kasyanov of Russia. That's the back end of the sled. Not bad. Only got a 10. Kasyanov had 125 kilometers speed. This is where these new Eurotech sleds for the Latvians. Look at the speed. He's six kilometers down. He's going to be back 10, 15 hundreds, 10, 20 hundreds. Is he driving too hard? He's oh, got a problem with the runners not being quite right for these this temperatures. Isn't, this isn't the same guy who was dominating the World Cup Tour in both two and four last year. He won the four-man title. He just doesn't have any rhythm with this equipment yet. Yeah, like you say, it's, it's getting used to the new car. It's getting used to the new sled. Watch the hands. Look at the four hands. Watch the hands come up here. Watch the technique. This is... Choreography on ice, first time I've said it today. Look at that unison move, and then they got to get in with aerodynamic presence. But boy, the guy in the back looks like we can see a lot of his shoulders. And remember, he's replacing Dreeskin's too. No, no, it's two. the guy at two. Uh, so Alexander Kashinov leads. It's a Russian one, two, after our first five sleds. Unbeaten since he won the two-man world championship in two-man and unbeaten this season in four-man is Germany's Francesco Friedrich. He's had five straight wins this year. Is this going to be number six? 44. Now, Torsten Marcus told me that they'd get a 478 start. They didn't even get close to that. Yeah. 
Wow. I said, what are you going to bet? He said, maybe a quarter pounder at the bottom of the hill. So this guy won the event yesterday by a lot. Yeah. And I said to him, wow, you were two perfect runs. He goes, John, I really dislike this track. Wow. I was just, just floored when he said that. Yeah. Dislikes this track. A lot of people find this a really hard track because it's got these subtle nuances. And if you're an inch wrong, it never comes right. Speed, really good run, though. 125 kilometers, he's going to be close. He doesn't have the speed the Russian did coming uphill here. He'll be behind still there. Four there he is. Boy, the Russians have made a statement. They were, well, they were in good form last night. The last guys. two four-man races, they've come from behind to win in both yep. runs. Yep. The Russians went five sleds earlier. That, that you know, that says something. Yep. So he's in. He, he's just positioning himself. Wasn't smooth here. Look at the back end. He's trying to gain control. Look at the aerodynamic profile. We can see somebody in the back. But... Started 600s quicker, finished 400 slower than Kasyanov. Back end of the sled. Nice. Nice line through yeah, this. Not bad at all. I don't think these sleds were really built. Well, he the coach, and there is Francesco Friedrich in really good form last night, as was Christoph Lang, and highly entertaining. Bavarian dinner we went to high up in the mountains. Very chilled, very relaxed. And so too this season, perhaps more than I've seen him in several years, is Simone Batazzo. Italian driver is now 33 years old, comes from Pieve di Cadore, which is close to Cortina in the Dolomites. A couple of times he's had World Cup wins in two man. His best result in four man has been a fifth position. But he's having. The best season probably since the Torino games, I think, for driving. Yeah, pretty good results so far in the season for him and uh, better in four man. Seventh and tenth in the first two races. His nemesis is the start. Fifth best start. Not, not great in the curve one, but not as bad as we saw Lavin Dean from Great Britain in the the runner tips here on the exit of these S's. Outstarting both Russian sleds as well. Oh, look how smooth that is. Yeah. Oh, little skid. 117 is good speed. Good aerodynamic form by the team. Three tenths down. This is looking like fifth. Look at the speed though. It's climbing 124, 125, 124, six, third fastest sled. Here he comes. He could take a tenth out of that. Sixth. Oh, oh, and by zero. Seven hundred. Yeah. And ahead of Oscar's keeper managed by 11. That might be enough for a top 10 finish in the first run. I don't know, you got you got three formidable drivers yeah, yeah. coming up here yet. Yes, exactly so. I wouldn't count on John Jackson with this start time he's got. Watch it. Hard. See the back end? Yeah. When you see spray like that, that's Hard too much one. friction. Yeah. Here though, this this is pretty textbook. Tiny little twitches with the steering as he comes on the straight to stop the, the tail skidding away. As experienced a driver in the field as anybody, right there. Yeah. Simone Bertazzo. Well, here's another major four-man threat for Germany. 25-year-old Nico Walter, like his teammate Francesco Friedrich, he calls Altenberg home. He's from Freital, not up far up the road. Started in Luge, double junior world champion in doubles Luge. Eric Frank is brakeman, back on the sled, missed last week. He's got a little hamstring issue. Says he's going for it. He's got a couple weeks off if it does hurt him here, but uh, these, these guys should get low 80s. Now this guy's done his third and second so far in two run, two uh, yep. races. Won his home race in Altenburg last year in his rookie season. A little bit of a hit, not bad, real straight. On the podium yesterday in the two-man as well for the first time this season. Yes, this, this is as good a driver as anybody in the field. Oh, and he's got that eight to ten. a great exit, look at that. That's how you drive the bend away. We'll see if the track's got some speed left here. If anybody's going to find it, it's this Max Art. 14 pulling away now. Oh boy, this is it. This is, this is the line that everybody out needs.
needs to follow. Look at the speed. Look at the speed. 127. He's really showing. The track still has time in it. Nico Volta leads by a big yeah. margin. Your vol. There you go. He's excited about that. The, uh, the interview, interview last night was saying to Christo Langen, we don't need to see the run, we just need to watch your face to know what's happening, and that's so true. Look at the six foot seven monster get out of the sled. Marco, look, look at him. Look, look at him. Yeah. He's got the energy. See, they feel that in the sled. They feel how smooth it is. Now, this is six foot seven, number two. Watch how quick. Look at this. Look at his meat hooks come in, get down. <laughs> Look at those six. His arms go round in front of Valka's he could, visor. He could touch the ice with those arms. Yeah. What well, great pictures. Look how quiet they are, the, how they got in that sled. Okay, Nico. Good stuff. That puts the cat among the pigeons very firmly. Gregor Birnbach in there returns to the team. Came off the bench. Yeah. And we Andreas still... Brago was hurt earlier in the week. He was supposed to come back under that team. Still got our world champion to go. And Nico Walter did not get those start times last week, yeah. which is why he was very disappointed. He won the bronze medal by 100. Next up, Rico Peter, the landscape gardener and chauffeur from Switzerland. Fifth yesterday, good two-man day for him. The Swiss are a little snake bitten, though. They lost the bronze medal last week at four man by 100. They lost the bronze medal yesterday in the two man by 300s. Nice, curve one. Eighth best start speed, though. That's going to be something tough to overcome. Boy, this guy here, Rico Peter, has been sloppy and fast every heat this season. Just hits everything in sight. Then you look up, you go, but he's fast. And he's really coming on strong. Last year, such a breakout season for him. He used to be a real two-man exponent, but now the four-man goes all. Well. Great lines for him there as well. Coming back, eighth to fifth to fourth. Speed climbing. Oh, he's bringing it right in tight here. here. We go. Top three Single for digits. Rico Peter. Wow, wow. seconds. Whoa. Hey, we said it all year. Everybody comes down the middle of the track, they have fast times. He doesn't come down the middle of the track. He hits everything in sight, and he's fast in every heat. Yeah, but he missed the key bits. He got the labyrinth right. He came off the edges beautifully. Couple of taps down the bend away. That's not too much of a handicap for him. Nico Valta, Rico Peter, Alexander Kasianov, our top three. Look at this. Articulation, you can see the sled split there, caused the skid. He did not come off in the optimum line. But it avoided the first two hits and down. And here, here he is, he's going uphill yeah. and he still makes a mistake and he still closes the gap. Equipment, he's got that Wolfgang Stomper sled. Yeah. And he's got a good set of hands on him as well. A couple of big boys. Next there. up is our world champion, our double four man oh, world champion, Maximilian Arns with Kevin Corona, Kevin Kuska back in the fold, and Martin yeah. puts oh, up. Christoph Langen was telling the story last night about before the World Championships, Max Art Kenterman said, with my start time, I'm never going to compete in the two-man. Get one of the young guys in, let me do the four-man. And he said, that sort of sport in gesture shows you what the German team is all about. Especially this guy. Double world champion. Not good there, though. I'm just behind, though, off Nico Walter's lead. Nico, both had similar starts. Walter, though. Beautiful lines down here. These are pretty good lines, here we go. too. If he has the speed on board, he could... 127 for Walter had. Be right back in it. Oh, he's German got it down to four. Two. This is good speed. Right to the 100th, either way. German 1, 2. Six. Six hundreds of a second. Boy, into the finish curve, looks like he had a little skid. Yeah. Because he was bringing it back to four hundreds. We thought he'd come back down to two. 128 kilometers per hour speed. <laughs> well, that led us to believe he was bringing it back, but something happened there in that uphill section near the finish, because all of a sudden he didn't. This is the exit of the S's. Smooth. Well, not really. He comes out a little bit to the left here. 
comes out a little early, and this is, you know, a little bit of a skid you saw with the runner tips. Yep. But he's in striking position. Yeah. 600 is behind for Max Arndt and things to tidy up for the second heat. Nobody is ever perfect down here, but Nico Walter is the closest to perfection after the first 10 sleds. 10 down, 14 to go. Next up is Justin Cripps, 28-year-old from Canada. With Tim Randall, Josh Kirkpatrick and Ben Kirkwell on the back of the four-man sled. Good result yesterday. Fourth place for the international man of mystery. The Canadians should get into the 80s. Yeah, 100th out of the medals yesterday. And Cripps just went, yeah, whatever. Second best start speed with the seventh best start time, the best speed. That means those athletes were accelerating into the sled and got down with some really good energy. Good run onto the bend away. I asked him, what is it about this track? He's got his first ever gold. He had a bronze last year, fourth yesterday. So I just like it. Of course, he doesn't sing a lot. And there you go, he likes it. Francesco Frigi just doesn't. It takes different drivers, different ways this place. Some people love it, some hate it. 2300's back. This will be a top half dozen run. Maybe inside the top 10. Yeah, yeah, he didn't have the speed in the bottom. Place. Lamont Dean and Bertazzo and Keeper Mattis. Seventh best start, eighth best down. Doesn't get the results in four man bobsled like he gets in two, especially on this track. Okay. Exit of Kreisel, that's late. Team is in good aerodynamic profile, but he gets airborne here late into the last of the labyrinths three corner combination. And then he gets into that beautiful Kelstein curve left. A lot of pressure in there, a lot of G force. Corner's coming at you so fast there. If you're late in one, you're late in them all. Third of our Russians is 28 year old Nikita Zakharov from Dimitrov, a former multiple Russian luge champion before he was snaffled away for bobsled. Which maybe he just grew too big for luge. Best World Cup race result December 2013 in Lake Placid. He finished in 10th place. And of course, that is our next stop post Christmas. Mid-90s. There it is. Ooh, big hit. Part one, which affects your speed. 11th best start, 10th best speed. Pretty quiet there. Yeah, not a bad exit at all onto the bend. He's a good driver. Didn't have very good results yesterday. Only 19th yesterday in the two-man race. 11th place last week in Winterberg. This is good speed on the bottom. The track still's got it. That's pretty good. Still top 10. Yep. So three Russian sleds now. All in the top, top 10. 10. A little bit better than yesterday. I bet you Pierre Luders had a few words for him last night at dinner. Not one of them made a top 10 finish in the two mile. And, and that's a sh Shock. I mean, that's shocker. Shocker is right. Not even one. Yeah. And they just had no speed. They nothing, no way, nothing going on. Could have been testing. Look at the feet coming down at the same time. Then get in with cat-like movements. Boy, the guy on the left ran too far. That's a half a step too far. Yeah, guy at two, yeah. slipped trying Look to get number in as two, well. Number two is waiting for the number three guy. And here comes the arm, shuffle. And number three hasn't got his legs in. Look. Yeah, yeah they weren't absolutely He has not perfect. got his legs in. He's trying to wriggle them forward even still in that Now watch the hit here. Watch the hit. Ooh, that's a lot of action. You saw the upper runner with Air and then the bottom rudder. Yeah. Think what you have to do to chip the ice away, how hard you have yeah, to hit it with a pressure. hammer. Yeah, absolutely. First of two Austrian four-man sleds is Benny Myers. Marcus Sammer behind him, the 27-year-old drove the other two-man sled yesterday. And they've got Danut Moldovan behind. 
Moldovan the Brakeman, new to the Austrian team. Yeah, he's brand new. Yeah, he used to slide for Romania. Not bad, 492. Uh, great, but not a bad entry and exit of curve one. Benny Myers showed us that he's got some fast lines in the format. Brother Raphael had a stunning first run in the men's skeleton race yesterday. Top nine in the first heat and a faded in the second, but Shogi's really got potential. And Benny's done a couple of those as well. A couple of really good runs. 11 and 15 in his first two events of the season. Mother and father here, of course, to watch the kids compete in the skeleton, and two man and four man. And Good-looking run so far. Oh, this is a bad eight top eight. This is about what he's doing been doing. exactly what Raphael did yesterday. Yeah. Seven. Wow. There's his father on the left, Manfred <laughs> Mayer, Franz Joseph Hoffman, who's a German from this area region. He coaches yeah. the Austrians. They're enjoying that. It's pretty good. Shows the track. Still got some action. Speed left yeah. in it. Good lines, good runners, good start. He beat Mel Bardis. Yes, he did. By 100. Malbardis beat him by 14 at the start. Watch the arms. The number two guy's waiting, OK? Look at him. Yeah. Oh, there. Look at that choreography. Pull the face mask Love down. It. Get in. Love oh, it. I've done this a few times. Well, not that many. Still only 21, Benny. Surfing USA. Well, that's appropriate for Nick Cunningham from Monterey, California. The boy who wanted to be a cowboy, went through college, paid his way as a bull rider, and now his ambition is to become a world champion in bobsled and then go on to race cars. Jim Reed's parents. There yeah, there one. they are. I was chatting to them earlier on. They live in Garmisch nearby. Casey Whitline, old holiday hams, and Sam Michener on the back handles of this US sled. This is the night train one, the one that this sled won the Olympic gold medal in Vancouver with Team Stephen Hooker. It'll be going back there for the third of our North American races Ooh, in January. Bigger hit in the one as we've seen, and he hits out of curve one, and boy, is he gonna be 30 hundreds plus behind by the time he gets out of these S's with those mistakes. Only 19. Good exit onto boy. the bend away as well. This is Boy, could recover this now, Cunningham. Boy, those mistakes, nobody's done those mistakes like that. Curve one, he's hanging in there. Both he and Holcomb had good runs yesterday. Real confidence-inspiring stuff, and that's yes. another good run through the labyrinth. Yeah, he found some real good time on the bottom in the two-man. Moved way above the no stop there. 53 or four kilometers now down. 12th place run, 12th place run for Cunningham. Lost 15 hundreds, 20 hundreds up there in the exit of curve one. Yeah, three tenths of a second slower than Benny Meyer, who just came down in front of him, and it wasn't hard to see where the errors crept in, was it? Can't make those mistakes up at curve one. Here, watch the violence. Look at that spray come up. Now, watch if he comes out of there. He banged the wall out of one. This is in the last corner. down on the bottom, yep. where he's hugging the wall. You can scrape off speed there, being on the wrong side of the straightaway. One more to go, and then home for Christmas. After a long day, they head up to Frankfurt, pack the sleds. No, no, they're going to Munich tonight. Wow. Well, yeah. I've stayed in the same hotel as they are. Not all of them. They've got to pack their sleds up first. Lloyd Costeg now from Moutier, just outside of Laplan in France. Coached by Bruno Mijon and Patrice Savelle, the uh, former Monaco driver and the former French world champion. And uh, Max Robert, Bruno Mijon's famous brakeman. It's right behind him. Top 10 result in Altenburg two years ago, his best in four man. A product of the La Plagne track. A couple guys in the team, there's a guy from Grenoble. 68 Olympic Games, and the bobsledding was held at Apto West. Boy, that was a nice line in the curve one. He had the 15th best start time, but the speed was a little bit better. Well, the challenge now will be to make the race. From everybody here on down, from 15th to 24th, you're looking at nine sleds, 10 sleds going into five spots in the race. 19th last week in Winterburg. 
sweat. He seemed to be getting through the chicane nicely today. So often a source of real drama, but this is really high in that echo bar, boy. Slowest, no, not quite the slowest run so far. So the other one is a big man. Wow, wow. Keep the man is might fight. fight to get into the field. And there's the sense of oh, he's, he's in a slump. That, that young 22 year old's in a slump. They have so much promise for that guy. Terrible result yesterday in two man. Here's the exit of the fourth S. And here's the same shot, different angle, and he drives it into the wall. You can see the runners in the back. Spray coming up, friction. Friction is like kryptonite to a bobsledder. 15 sleds, Nico Valta, Max Arndt, and Rico Peter are your top three. Pressure now on everybody remaining in the field is to make the cut for the second heat. Uga Zalim's first of those to shoot for the final five spots in the race. 30-year-old fireman, started off as a brakeman back in 2008, and after the Vancouver Games, converted to driving. Intos Dambis on the back handles, by the way, started in the team in 2002. Ooh, tapped the wall before the first curve. Was it him that did that in the two-man yesterday? I think so. Somebody yeah, hit the wall and the handle was still out. Uh, I, may, I may be miscalling no, it. No, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think it was them, but they had a good time. Uh, it might have been maybe, the Poles. Maybe it was them. However, the Poles, he is bouncing from wall to wall all the way down. Lots of ways through reprisal. Gets the exit sorted out, yeah, but a good little late. He's had some good results. He finished six in the two man boys really high there. Yeah. It's really down to the C curve. Running away from him here. He's got ninth best speed. He'll be in the race in fifth pool. Tied with Kiba Manis. So wow. two Latvians at the tail of the field. Boy, there's got to be some disappointed coaches up there. They don't bring three teams to the competition to have these results right here. Yeah, to have two These are new Eurotech sleds. You know, they're still, still dealing with new sleds. And watch the sled drift to the right here. In, down, quickly. Boy, they got down so fast. I think that caused the drift. Yeah. And he taps right there. Oh, is that such a mistake? Well, look the other the, thing look is. Look at the sled still skidding. Yeah, he's got his left hand off the handles to try and flick the lever in. So it only gives him one hand to steer. And it's not a steering wheel, it's a set of ropes. Yeah. A little bit of discussion about the loads there. Fairly monosyllabic. I'm afraid Ugu Zalem's not at all happy with that. Wasn't just the start, though. Everything was a bit skewy. Czech Republic's Jan Verber, 33-year-old, crashed this sled in Altenburg in training. They almost snapped the bales off the front. Had to then drive to Winterberg overnight to get their old sleds to finish practice. This went to Prague to get laminated back up, and they ended up racing it again. <sighs> Best ever World Cup result in four-man fifth in Altenburg two years ago, which is still the best ever result for the Czech Republic in box sledding. No, you had the gold medal. In four-man. Four yeah, yeah. Ivo yeah. Danilovic, the coach here, he was a European champion in two-man. Cortina in 2005. That's the day the small fish ate the big fish. It was a good track for those results, wasn't it? Evo's here coaching both the Czechs and the Koreans. Yeah. 14th and 15th, the first two events of the season for Jan Buba. 16th at the moment. This guy has got good driving skills. Nice line there. Do you know, this might put him ahead of the two Latvian sleds. Oh, yeah. Good skills on them. He needs a good last couple of corners. That's the best speed. Here we go. And he is in 12th. 12. Ahead of Cunningham, Batazzo, Kostek, and the two Latvians. That's the, the beauty of this track. It really, really promotes driver's skills. Yeah, on the exit of that it cries rewards off. a clean line, doesn't it? Yeah, and that shows you Jan Ribas got talent, eyes and hands, and this is where it starts. Here he's 16th place. But because of this perfect drive on the bottom part of the track, he rockets into 12th. 
And here's down in the labyrinths. It's, you know, it's a fine line. It's where an inch either way can result in a good bad time or even on your head time. That slow motion does it no justice. They're coming past that camera at 75 miles an hour and upwards. That's quick as you like. Oh boy, here's a good story coming up. First race at the senior level since the Olympics in Vancouver for John Jackson. Spent last season on the bench with injury. He's done a couple of Europa Cup races. Okay, settle down at home, Paula. Just chill and relax. Four drivers in this sled. Bradley Hall and Bruce Tasker both drove yesterday in the two-man. Ben Simons has also started driving two-man in Europa Cup. And so Jack here this morning was going, if I make a mistake, I'll never hear the end of it from these guys. Well, since the Olympics, he's had a baby with Paula Walker, yeah. the old GB woman slider. And now she's pregnant again with twins. Yeah. So he's been busy. So it's all those injuries will do to you. Now this sled, they should get in the 80s. Yeah. Mid 80s, mid 80s at least. Well, oh, no, mistake there. Lavin Dean said 481. And they start 487. Oh, the drift, though, at the exit of the drive line. Six hundredths of a second off the lead. And that is a good exit. That's good. That's great. Jack had been dialing himself back in this season after a year away. Great result at the Olympic Games. Good to see him back. Great Britain. Seventh got, place. They got a lot of athletes in Great Britain that are coming out. Go. We've not seen him on our TV since 2014. And Jacko could be got driving seven. himself into a top six spot. Eighth place hasn't quite got, got the, the speed, speed at the bottom. Eighth, that's eighth good, place though. at the line. And that's a good run. Yeah, that's really good. You know, they got the guy doing the sled dogging up there today, Mark Lewis Francis. Do you recognize that name? Gold medalist, the 2004 Olympics in four by 100 meters. He's entered the team. And you might be seeing him in the second half of the year. The Great Britain's got some great athletes. Look at the problem here, though. Yeah. Jocko did not come out of those drive lines clean. He didn't he didn't tap, I no, don't think, but still that look at him, he's looking look at you could see him looking a little bit left. Yeah, puts him a little too far to the driver's left in the first yeah. turn, but that can be tidied up in the second heat. Eighth place. Good result for him. Lamindine in twelfth should also make the cut very comfortably. Alicia Kittle and uh, Misha McNeil from the women's team down there sled dogging as well. And next up is Yun Jun Wan of Korea, this 30-year-old. Fifth in the two-man world championships in February in Winterberg. Four-man, still not quite at that level. Should be 92, 93, if not better. 94. Semi hit in the first curve. Take on. Yeah, the two-man is a sports car. The four-man's a big truck. To figure out the rhythm between both is a delicate, delicate balance. Some people never do it. Some people are just two-man or specialist or four-mans, and very few people are both. And some people are really born for four-man. Max Arnt's in classic guitar. That's pretty good lines there. Yeah. Considering the mistakes he made up in the exit yeah. of the S. Decent speed, too. This is a 17th, 18th, 6th fastest. He's 18th at the moment. Might he might back. pull up two or three places by the line. No. All right, so that speed misleading down at the bottom then. 49.65. That leaves him 600 out the tail of the field behind Cuba Manis and Zalims. 19th in the field. I think that's going to get him in, though. It could well do. Look at the S's. Look at the heads. You have to feel yourself. If you're riding at the back of that sled, you've got to know where you are. You just can't be a sandbag. It comes out of the fourth S too early and causes a lot of skidding and a lot of loss of speed. Well, there is the Korean team. Lots of Korean officials here doing their juries exam so that they can run the track in Pyeongchang. They know the rules, know the regulations. Two man event was live on Korean TV yesterday, so bobsledding is now expanding into the Asian market, and the Koreans, they're pretty good at this sport. Well positioned for 2018. 
20th of our 24 sleds. Stephen Holcomb of the USA still struggling with this thigh strain. The 2010 Olympic champion, the 2009-2012 world champion in former. The night train too, and you got two rookies on there, Frank Del Duca, Sam McGuff. They were not together last week in this 491. It's a pretty good start considering Holcomb was sitting in the sled basically last week. Yep. He knows how to come down this track. He won the event here in January of 2014. He had a pretty good year that year. That's a great exit from Holcomb. Look, his leg's not strong, they're not getting the start. He hasn't forgotten how to handle a sled. Yeah, seventh place yesterday in the two-man. He had 22nd best start in the first run. He still found ways to find some great time on the bottom. 12th at the moment, off an 11th faster start. What speed has he got here? Not very good speed. 125s will get him right into it. 14th best speed. Didn't have it going here. Could be top 10 or 12th. 12th. 11th best start. Coaches, Brad Shamway on the left, Mike Dion on the right. Coaches are very high in Frank Del Duca and Sam McGuff, both yeah. new guys to the team. First time they've matched them up this week. Alana Myers Taylor went home and took her husband with her, who was yeah. on the sled last week. And uh, so the U.S. got a new push combination here. A little tap there by Holcomb on the exit of the S's, but boy, he kept push, it going push, pretty push, straight. Push. Look at the crowd all the way down the bend away. One of the great things about this track is so much of it is at knee height. Well, a couple of weeks of R&R &R for Holke. He'll come back in Lake Placid at a track he loves to slide on. Very strong. 20 sleds filling the field now. You've got to bump somebody to get in. And on the bubble, two Latvians and a Korean sled. Can Doran Grigore from Bucharest in Romania push his way into this field? I don't know if there's anybody else who could probably bump the Koreans. I think they're going to be in. The Romanians, we'd love to think that they could come down. And he would love to think so too, wouldn't he? 5.06 to start, only 21st fast start. Real high in the first S, which means he's got to adjust and steer in the next two to catch up. And he's... Well, that's not a bad exit at all. Avoided the big skid. And you jinxed him. Yeah. Let's see if he can nail it here off the cries or keep what speed he's got on board. A little variance there. That's not bad. Late. Ooh. 21st, but how close will he be to one of Korea? Needs speed at the bottom. Little skid. Not bad speed. Trump speed. Still in 21st. Oh, doesn't quite make it. Frustrating the coaches, but the 21st best start that put him behind the eight ball. And although he had 12th best speed on the bottom part of the track, it's just pretty tough to overcome. You can't gain time on the way down. You can only per watch the second guy here. Look at what are you, what's yeah, he looking what over at? What is he looking at? He's I saw looking that at he's looking at the big screen. I saw that in his What's he doing? Is he checking to see the handles are coming in? Our production crew picked that up. Yeah, I saw that at the start. I thought, there's some, but what's he seeing at the side of the track? Very strange. Well, next up, we have a World Cup rookie, Lucas Kolb from Austria, just 22 years old. This is only his third year in a sled. He was not a brakeman. He came straight in as a driver. He's done two seasons on Europa Cup, part season the first year, and this is his World Cup debut. It's also the first time he will ever have raced a four-man down this track. So this is pushing him in at the deep end without the life preserver. Especially the exit of Kreisman. That's the challenge part. Teammate Benny Meyer is in seventh place. There. Oh, no problem. Number two just didn't get in smooth. Marcus Treichel, the man at two, incidentally, also drives for Austria at Europa Cup level. And Andrew Samoff on the back. He was on uh, the two man sled yesterday by Marcus Sammer. 
and they're really mixing up, like Great Britain, mixing up their drivers, their brake men, just trying to expand the program. Listen to the sound of these big four men. Never driven a four-man in a race down this track before? You wouldn't know. It's a really smooth-looking run. He might be hauling it a little off the corners, and he was there. Good speed at the speed. At the moment, though, it's only 20 seconds at the line. 5.06 at the start, and a 50.08 at the bottom. 500s behind Doran Grigore, who has been down this track several times. I think there's a future for Lucas Kolb, definitely. Shakes his head. A couple of mistakes crept in. Maybe having to steer a little hard off here, and that put him into a skid. Just hauled it off a fraction late. And, John, when we talk about a fraction, it's a couple of hundreds of a second, not even a tenth of a second late, and it puts you into that sort of a skid. Well, here he comes off too early in the echo bond, and you're going uphill. You make a mistake like that, boy. But, hey, he's down. Yeah. Congratulations. He's never started with the cameras in his face and the hoopla and the lights and all the noise at the top. Next up, another debutante from Norway, Thomas Heipel, with Corbinian, his brother, Andreas Bugen, and Alexander Winger, who was on the two-man sled behind Thomas yesterday. We were saying the last time a Norwegian raced in World Cup bobsledding was Arnfinn Christensen. Ten years ago? Yeah, 2004. 2002? Probably, probably was. And their grandfather, Great Heritage, slid for West Germany. His picture's on the wall down there at the Echo Struble. Yeah. His father's here with him, so they yeah. got some German heritage. Yeah, his father was uh, speaking Bavarian to everybody earlier on. 507. Well, they had a crash in training. These kids, a lot of energy came into the headshots. We've talked to them a lot. And they're enthusiastic. They don't get a lot of support. You know, and for Norway, skiing you know, for a winter sports country like Norway, it's great to have these guys in the sport. It's great for Bob Stanley to have all the uh, Alpine nations coming in, and the uh, Scandinavians as well would be very welcome. True, just get you a great good job. 21st, he's first, he's closing on a place in the race. This is going to put Horn of Career under pressure. The rookie can make it in. Seventh best speed, 124 kilometers an hour. How close is he going to be at the line? Oh, just out. hundreds. Just out. 1,300s, he got beat at the start by Wall of Korea. Great effort. Oh, so nearly made the cut. This guy's got a little talent. Yes, he does. Boy, 1,300s behind the Koreans at the top and only 12 at the bottom. Look, he can't believe it. He's so and frustrated. the money that they don't have in their program. Yeah. Little early here. See the runners skating there. Yeah, on the exit. The back end here, this is pretty good. This is where they crashed in training, and looks like he learned his lesson well. Uh, and he carried the speed there, seventh fastest speed at the bottom. Off start number what that were they? 23rd fastest at the start. There's a man who's got good hands. Last week, Vukrad Yenovich, his man at two, the start handle broke as they pushed off the line. And off two fourth place finishes the week earlier in Europa Cup, he was really hoping for something in Winterberg. Let's hope the Serbians have got better start handles they have. Well, they're six foot nine breakman. They can't find a uniform to match. It's the only thing they can find him that he can fit into. Wunderlow, yeah. Six foot nine. Tallest man in the field. 508 gets away. 23rd. Whoa, and I'm afraid that has probably sealed their fate. Too many skids. As they thunder down the bend away behind our commentary position. A little rumble of thunder every time the sled comes by. Good lines. Still 23rd. He will be in front of Lucas Kolb of Austria. But, oh, 22nd ahead of Don Gregorio of Romania as well. But does not make the cut. 
2800 off the cut. And that's relative to the 508 start. The Koreans beat him by 14 at the top and 28 at the bottom. Look at how high he got there in that fourth S. That's what caused him to drive into the wall here on the left side of our screen. Yeah. Came out, you know, he's high and he panicked, came out early and played a little ricochet rabbit here in this bender, bend away as they call it. So there is Vuk Radjanovic, the former wrestler from Belgrade in Serbia. Shortly to get married again. And our first heat leader, of course, it's the man who's won the foot. No. It is not Francesco Friedrich. Same color sled, though. It is Nico Balter. Had better start time this week. Suffered at the start last week. Got a couple change in the team and posted some really inspirational time at the bottom. And wow. 12 hundreds of a second, though. Cover our top three. Two Germans and a Swiss. What is this, the 1990s? Alexander Kasinov of Russia ahead of Francesco Friedrich, who's only fifth off the first heat and unlikely to win from 2100s back, but never say never where Francesco, Francesco is concerned. It's a good run from John Jackson to go eighth. Stephen Holcomb in 12th, Lamindine 13th, Nick Cunningham in 15th place, and the field rounded out by two Latvian sleds and the Koreans. We go 20 to 1 to decide the medals in our second and deciding heat just over 30 minutes from now. Join us then at 1.15, 12.15 Greenwich Mean Time. Till then, from John Morgan, me, Martin Haven, it's goodbye for now.